All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. Tim here, principal broker with Discover Oregon Real Estate. We just shortened it to door. Oh, it's on this side. So it's easier to say. But we're tuning in from door to give you guys a window into the 2023 real estate forecast. We've got a lot to cover today. Uh, and I just want to dive right in first off with the congratulations to all of the real estate agents out there who made the cut. A lot of people didn't know this, but uh, there was slated to be about 40 to 45 percent of agents just in our local MLS here that were uh, expected to not renew their licenses at the turn of the year um, because the market has shifted and there's a decrease in the number of closings. And when a decrease in the number of closings happen, there's there's less transactions to go around for the agents that are on board. So um, I'll give a one more second here for people to jump on and we'll dive into our slideshow. I should have pulled up my Facebook on my phone. Hold on a second. Let's see who's on here. Coming at you guys from Rivendell. Hope everyone's staying dry. All right. First things first, as a uh, congratulations to agents that are still in this market. Now, some people don't know this, but I actually coach agents and broker owners all over the country. Uh, that are looking to maximize uh, their opportunity in this shift. And so right now, it's shift, we're, we're definitely going to see a weight on educated agents and educated buyers and sellers that are going to be the ones that actually take advantage of the opportunity of this market. There are some unique obstacles that we're going to talk about today and some unique opportunities that those create. So first off, let's dive right into mortgage rates. This is the big hot topic that we've been talking about on a number of our lives over the last year. And this is a pretty telling graph that shows effectively from January of last year to now the uh, end or the start of this year, 3.22 to 6.42. That is a doubling of rates, ladies and gentlemen. And when you see price drops occurring, when you see inventory stacking up, it is ultimately caused by affordability that's driving uh, the market to actually stabilize and neutralize in some areas and other areas we'll see depreciation. We'll talk about that in a moment. So here is the story that all these Fed rates are not revealing. Last year, the Fed, Federal Reserve met seven times and raised rates every single one of those. Uh, and typically, mortgage rates do have a relationship between the 30-year the rate and the 10-year treasury yield, um, which is man managed by the Federal Reserve. And we've seen that average spread at 1.7. I think we talked about this on our last live. I know it's been a bit, but right now we're seeing that spread up to 2.6. So that means that there's an opportunity here with mortgage rates that with the Fed, even with the Fed not raising anything more or not lowering at all, if that spread were to actually reduce to 1.79 versus the 2.6 we'll see on that slide, um, that would put rates down at 5.28. Yet they're still at 6.5. Why? Because of uncertainty, because the panic of the skyrocketing Fed rate and the projection that they could even continue to raise it into next year. Uh, resulted and ultimately inflation is what this is following. So when inflation is high, the mortgage companies, if you just think log logically, if they're going to be lending money on a fixed rate over a 30 year period and the value of that dollar that they're lending out is going to be going down over time, they're going to have to make a higher rate for it to make sense to, to enter the market with lendable money. And so at 2.6%, the good news for us is, one, the panic is already starting to subside. We saw that spread all the way up at 3.2% back in November. And that's really where I think we hit uh, some of our peak rates um, that we'll see for a bit. Uh, we had a client even getting locked in as like high as like 9.5% because there were several points above prime, lower credit score on a buy side. And obviously, they'll be a candidate for refinance a year from now. Um, but this is this tells you why adjustable rate mortgages, which we'll talk about in a moment, um, are another opportunity to consider in this market. So the panic starting to subside. This gap between the 10-year Treasury yield and the 30-year fixed rate is hopefully going to come back down closer to this 50-year average. And we're still seeing a 1% difference even after it came down from this 3.2 peak. So still quite a ways for it to go, for it to settle down. 
Now there's uh, <laughs> this is there's two different kinds of of buyers in this market. Um, the ones that are confused, apprehensive, and ultimately sitting on the sidelines, uh, and that's a lot of buyers right now. A lot of buyers have said, "Hey, I I I don't understand the market. I'm just going to pull back and sort of sit on the sidelines and wait for things to normalize." Now we can expect that uh, inventory might see a little bit of pressure on it when those buyers return to the market with a little bit more confidence. Yet for those that are confident right now, those who are willing to take the information that we're talking about here and explore the opportunities that exist. I'm seeing some of the biggest concessions uh, on purchases that I've personally negotiated in my entire real estate career. Uh, eight years in the business, uh, over 550 deals closed. And, you know, back in 2014, 2015, we were coming out of we were coming out of a pretty suppressed real estate market. Yet right now. There are sellers that are not educated, that are apprehensive, and they're just wanting to unload things before they feel like what might get worse. And what I'm predicting is that things are going to be dynamic. They're going to be volatile, and we're headed to more towards a balanced market. The upcoming months, this is from the chief economist at the National Association of Realtors, Lawrence Young, says the upcoming months should see a return of buyers as mortgage rates appear to have already peaked and have been coming down since mid-November. If we go back to that slide, I know I'm going fast, guys, so if you want these slides, send them to you directly, just DM me. But we look at that 3.2% peak was the, was the spread from the 10-year treasury yield and the 30-year fix. That's coming down. We expect that to keep going down. And then this is from the former Assistant Secretary of Housing. So be advised, this may be the one and only window for the next few years to get into a buyer's market. Remember, as the Federal Reserve data shows, home prices only go up and always recover from recessions, no matter how mild or severe. Long-term homeowners should view this market right now as a unique buying opportunity. Not my words, David Stevens. He doesn't seem to have a horse in the race, and that's his best advice to the American people. Uh, I'm going to throw this on the bottom. At the end of this show, I'm going to be... Uh, opening it up for if there's any questions, you guys can just fire them away on the on the uh, comments thread and we'll either get back to them uh, through one on one calls or any follow up appointments that folks want to make. This is the if there's only one thing you take away from this video, it's that. This buyer's market that we're walking into right now might be the last one we see for a bit. Once apprehensive buyers return to the market and once sellers successfully readjust expectations from a back-to-back 20-year, 20% appreciation year over year, especially in the Northwestern states, Oregon and Washington, um, you're, you're, go you're not going to see, I think, the same concessions that we're able to negotiate right now. So keep that in mind, nor the same terms. Some of the owner carry financing deals that we're able to put together, um, like I said, they just would have been unheard of a year ago, would have been, would have been a non, non-starter, some of these offers we're making. Now let's talk about home prices. Here's here's one thing that uh, is can be unilaterally agreed upon, and that is that none of the experts agree on where things are headed. Uh, obviously, the average of these top seven uh, forecasters coming from different backgrounds, uh, they're averaging around a flat line, meaning not depreciation, not appreciation, essentially home prices on average flatlining. Now, that's a national forecast. States that have seen dramatic appreciation over the last two years might expect to be on the red side of this curve. If there's more what we call fluffy appreciation or funny money that's rolled into like, let's say Oregon um, or Washington, these are strong, strong markets that have dramatically benefited from the hyper appreciation uh, over the last two years, but also inflation. So some of that has to be, some of that may be subject to being clawed back. Uh, in this rebalancing of the market and this market correction that we're in. But this is certainly not the doom and gloom of the 20% depreciation that we saw back in 2008, 2009. Not even, a, not even the same thing. Um, and we look at home appreciation pre and post pandemic. Uh, if you look at 2017 to 2020, and then you look at... Uh, you look at 2020 to, uh, or sorry, 2020 to 2022. Uh, we're essentially we we appreciated you know double that in half the time that 12 percent we saw between 27 to 2017 and 20 to 2020. 
Now, in terms of price reductions, certainly if you're looking at Zillow uh, or you're shopping around right now, you can see a lot of listings that are coming down. Uh, price reductions were not really even a thing uh, when we into the first half of this uh, half of last year. And then we saw that on the increase as we went to the second half of 2020, 2022, I'm sorry. Now, the question would be, have home values hit a bottom in that sort of that market correction price adjustments coming down? Well, look, keep in mind, a lot of the reason why we saw price reductions, especially over Q4 of last year is one, People who needed to sell wanted to get it done before the holidays. But two, sellers were still operating under, you know, this uh, lofty expectations and not a lot of clients, um, not necessarily mine, but I've certainly seen a lot of sellers out there on the market uh, having a hard time adjusting their expectations with what the rise in interest rates was causing to the market. So we did see some month over month changes in home prices nationally starting in July when rates were kind of approaching that peak. And then we started to see that uh, around August, September, August, when we saw that peak 3.2% above the Federal Reserve rate was where prices hit, ultimately seemed to have the greatest effect. And then that started to slow as we went into the fall or sorry, into uh, Q4. So the reason why we say we must control the narrative is because if you look up the if you if you uh, look up the news stories, uh, they're just going to be selling clickbait, uh, not necessarily real market data uh, that's going to be helpful for you if you're looking to buy or sell in this market. Over eleven thousand houses are selling every day. That comes down to about eight houses that sell every minute. So to put this into context, I had an interesting conversation just recently with someone who, you know, was all doom and gloom. They, they, they essentially in this 10 minute conversation told me everything was headed back to 2008. No houses can even sell in this market right now. Uh, it's impossible. This was actually a listing that had expired and they had had an agent that had worked with in the past and didn't get the job done. And they were just feeling like it was all about the market. Well, any house sells in any market, if it's positioned right, if it's priced right. And in this market, eight houses are selling every minute. So in the 10 minute conversation I had with this gentleman who I won't name, uh, 80 homes had sold. Well, he was telling me homes aren't selling in the market. Something to just keep into context. And alternative financing is one of the ways we're doing it. So if we're putting together deals, the adjustable rate mortgages are actually a, a product that's worth looking at. And I'd say almost any deal we're writing offers on, we're asking for full credit towards seller closing costs, whether you need the full 3% to actually cover your loan origination fees, your appraisal, your prepaid, uh, you know, title escrow prepaid, all that jazz. Uh, even if that only comes out to 2%, we're still asking for 3% back on closing costs because we can use it, that additional percent to buy down the rate. Now, the risk for arms was substantially mitigated by all the regulatory action that came from 2008. And so, you know, adjustable rate mortgages was like the sort of taboo term that, you know, a huge part of the country, especially those who came on the wrong side of it, uh, were, were kind of it was kind of a, a taboo product for so long, um, partially because of how they were being originated. Uh, but also because we were going from a really low interest rate market into a higher interest rate market. And right now we expect that to be inverse. So consider ARMS as one of the products that could make home buying accessible to you today. The reason why having home buying accessible to you today matters outside of the rate is because the stack of open inventory allows for a shakeup and really a softening on pricing. So uh, this was, I'll just read these off. Temporary rate buy downs are a hot trend for mortgages as borrowers face higher costs for home loans. Some buyers are exploring alternatives to traditional mortgages in a period of rising interest rates, but that is expected to continue in 2023. Buy downs are a less costly alternative to a traditional fixed rate mortgage. And this is not to mention owner carry financing, which we could probably do an entire show on individually. So the biggest opportunity right now comes with the stack up of inventory. If you're shopping around, you generally speaking, will have about double the, uh, double the choices that you did uh, at this time last year. And we expect that to continue going into spring. 
Conversely, those that are pending, all the bidding wars, you know, even when we saw a lot of inventory hitting the market, it would go so fast that the percentage of pennings was so high, there really still wasn't a lot of inventory out there. And we've seen the pending counts go down month over month um, consistently since January. So this is part of what is accentuating the opportunity. And for sellers, this is something really important to keep in mind. If you are putting your house on the market, you are entering into a race. At six months of inventory, that's that absorption rate is defined as um, at the rate things are selling. If nothing were added to the market within six months, everything would be sold. That's the balanced market that we're trending into. That means that out of uh, a dozen homes, maybe only two are selling each month. So you've got 12 homes out there that you're competing with right now. Only two of those 12 may sell this month. And that means that you, if you're going to price, you need to position to be the winner in that race. Otherwise, you could find yourself in a situation where you are, uh, if you're in a depreciating area, then you might be following the market down. If you're in a flatline area, you may just be uh, delaying your ability to move. So uh, when we think about, I guess, in closing, the opportunity in this market, uh, it is a shift. It is a turn. And if we were to... Look at professional racing as an analogy here. And this goes for agents that are, are wanting to build their businesses right now, but also for investors and for buyers that are wanting to capitalize and for sellers that need to cash in on equity. We're getting a lot of farm and ranch properties, a lot of big listings that realize they're top heavy and subject to a shift. Consider professional racing uh, for an analogy of the opportunity here. In professional racing, the money is not made in the straightaways. It's not made when things are easy and clear and defined. All of the headway is made on the turn. That's where they make their money. That's where they gain their position. That's where you could gain your position in this market. If you're interested in a consultation, you'd like to chat, you can DM me. You can, for those of you who have my cell phone, you can text me. Um, I'm opening up my schedule to no obligation consultations for anyone who might be thinking about buying, selling, or investing in the next 12 months. I'd love to connect with you guys. Again, for those that don't know me, I'm Tim. I'm the principal broker here at Door, And uh, our mission is to help you find your people, your community, the group you want to do life with, and ultimately to find your home in that place. Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, catch us next month for another market report.